What is going on, everybody? I just wrote a book. If you are not familiar with this, um, it just came out a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to do a demo project that is in this book. This is one of the chapters um, in the uh, Git chapter. I show everyone how to uh, set up sort of what I call the poor man's GitHub. So uh, a centralized Git server, it's not GitHub with like the front end and everything, but a centralized Git server that you and your friends can use to work on, say, a secret project. Do I really expect you to work on a secret project that a GitHub uh, private project is not good enough for? Not really. But these types of projects are an amazing way to tie together a bunch of um, different like Linux and kind of like just tech skills um, into something you'll actually remember and be able to reproduce like at a job or for another project. The skills you are going to learn in this video are uh, you're going to learn some Linux command line skills. You're going to learn about SSH keys. You're going to learn about remote logins with SSH. You're going to learn about um, some very, you're going to see some skills like user creation, user group management, a little bit, um, file permission management, how SSH kind of works, uh, together with some security considerations, a little bit of chat about DNS. Even if you are not a developer like that, um, adding kind of practical Linux skills, like look, this is a 200 page book. I, I intentionally kept this as short as I possibly could and added in only the necessary stuff because we all already have three or four 600 page Linux and Unix books at home and they're amazing, but not everyone needs to know all that stuff. And sometimes you just want the practical nuggets that you need and enough theory to kind of understand what's going on. That said, my work machine is literally resting on this book right now. So like, this is pretty much the opposite of the book I wrote. Very interesting, amazing, useful in certain niche jobs, uh, but not stuff you're going to run across all the time unless that is literally your, your area of focus, the Linux kernel and interacting with it. Um, for everyone else, I try to write this book. So without further ado, let's jump into it and create our droplet. We're going to do that right here. Um, and you know, like this interface changes occasionally. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Likewise, the um, Ubuntu version is going to change. Um, again, it's not really important. Just pick the newest one. We're going to go for the cheapest one because this is not like for production or anything. This is for a demo. Um, although on the other hand, if it's just a, a Git server, you could probably go with the cheapest one uh, forever, unless you have thousands of people committing to it all the time with lots of repos. Um, and we're just going to use TL 2024. Um, here you'll select your SSH key. If you've never used SSH keys before, or if you're super confused about all that, um, I do cover that in the book. Uh, I also have some videos on it here on the YouTube channel, so um, whatever. You're going to want to use a, a utility called SSH-keygen for that if you want to look up the man page to create one. I'm going to presume that you have handled that somehow, and um, that's not what this video is about. So add your SSH key here. Um, and then we're simply going to name this, we'll just name it poor man's GitHub. Doesn't have to be a poor man, it could be a poor anybody. Create the droplet. And we'll just wait a second here for an IP address to uh, get allocated here to the, to the VM. Um, and when that is set, we'll move to the shell and connect to this thing and start setting it up. All right, we have an IP4 address, and we're gonna use that to SSH in right now. Um, it's the root account at Ubuntu, lol. Um, you can set up DNS for this. Um, if you're gonna set up like, you know, subdomain, something like git.yourdomain.com, you would do that now, create an A record, point it at this IP address. Uh, we're just gonna use the raw IP because this is a demo video, and I don't feel like showing you my DNS server's interface is that interesting. So. You'll connect to it here. We only know its IP address. And then um, we're going to create a user because like <laughs> committing via, guess, uh, via Git to, to like the root account, it just, it just feels terribly wrong. Um, so we're going to create a, an unprivileged user account and which, what is it in Ubuntu? Um, grep sudo and Etsy group. We're just going to look, uh, I don't even know what I'm piping here for. Oh, oh, the lag, the input lag is, it's, it's killing your boy. All right. 
Grep sudo in Etsy group. Yeah, I was wondering if it was sudo or sudo errors or wheel or, you know, various uh, Linuxen and, uh, and BSDs uh, call this group different, but it's, it's the sudo group and that is why we're going to add a user. So this is, um, I like the automatable command. There's add user as well, which is interactive. It's sort of more of like a wizard on the command line, but because I assume at some point I'm gonna script everything, I just want a non-interactive command and user add is that command in Linux. There's more about that in the users and groups uh, chapter of the book also. So uh, if you're wondering what book I'm talking about because you skipped halfway through the video, uh, Link is in the description below. I wrote a book, it's dope. Um, user add, uh, we're gonna create a home deer. I think this is just dash M normally. I, I use, I like using the long options cause it's just very, very clear, but there are short options too. We're gonna create the home directory and home Dave. We're gonna actually create that like right now. We're setting a shell. This is actually the default value here. Uh, but if you were gonna set the shell to like a Z shell or something you've installed, you would do that here. And we're also going to add this user to the group sudo. And then we are gonna set a password. And that password will be quite secure. It will be Linux. In real life, you'd wanna do something a little safer, right? Um, now we're gonna set up this account a tiny bit more. So I am sue super usering over to the Dave user with all of that environment. And um, there's no SSH directory. Our, our goal here is to make this user like something that we can directly log into, um, including non-interactively like with Git. So we need to create the SSH directory. We'll do that. And I'll clear this just so you can. So we just ran uh, make dear SSH. And now we would like to um, create an authorized keys file for our, um, whoops, that's totally wrong. It's my local, so in my home directory, SSH, authorized keys. Now this is just sort of like a magic incantation, right? The authorized keys file is what the SSH program looks for to see if a key like coming in matches the public key in any one line of this file before it lets somebody in. So uh, that's how it knows who is allowed to use uh, to log in as the user Dave. Well, it's whoever brings a key whose other half matches the, uh, the keys listed here on each line of authorized keys. This is also a great reason to learn Vim, right? Um, like VI or Vim uh, are gonna be installed in these remote environments. That's why it's in the book. If you're a software developer um, and you have to do this, it's like, this is one of those, like you can't use your IDE. I'm sorry, there's no mouse, it's a server. You're gonna have to do this um, on the command line with a command line editor. That's nano. Uh, is fine too, it's not installed everywhere you might encounter, but VI or Vim or Vim likes are gonna be everywhere. So if you know those uh, key bindings and stuff, if you're comfortable there, um, that is super useful for that reason. So here, um, grab your public key um, and paste it in here. And we're gonna actually just write and quit this. And there's one more thing that you'll have to do, and this is where everybody falls down, including me every time I forget it. And that's um, right now, um, this file is not secure enough for SSH. Like SSH will actually complain because it's world readable. If you're unfamiliar with permissions, there is a chapter in the book about permissions. <laughs> but this basically means, um, you know, the Dave user has read write, the Dave group has read write, fine. And then um, everyone else can read this file. SSH is not super comfortable with that. so. We're going to, whoops, we're gonna uh, change this file mode to 600 so that it's really only readable and writable by the, uh, by the user that owns it. You can see how that changed. Again, there's a whole section in the book about that if that is not super obvious to you what I'm doing there. But for this video, our goal is getting the Git servers, or I should say, get sort of Git host set up. Um, and that's all you need to know, just run that. So now we're gonna test this. We're gonna log out, now we're back at root. We're gonna hit, I'm hitting control D here. You can type exit or log out as well. Um, and I hit control D again. Now I'm on my local machine again, you can see here. And now I'm gonna test to see if this works. Like, can I log in 
directly with um, my SSH key. I can. Okay, so we're successful. This, this is kind of all the user setup you need to do. So let's uh, also see if we successfully added ourselves to the pseudo group. I think in, in new versions of like DES or I guess server Ubuntu or whatever, whatever's on uh, DigitalOcean has Git tools installed already, but you may need to run this. Remember your password that we set earlier. Um, it would install just like the stuff you need, like the core util um, Git utilities. Um, not all kind of versions or configurations that you'll find um, will already have this pre-installed as this one does. So that's why I'm including this command. Okay, now it's set to manual installed. We definitely want that. We don't that, want that changing out from under us. And now we can um, initialize a bare repo. And the way we do that is with git init bare, we're just calling it my repo. Uh, you can just call this uh, main if you want. Whoops. Um, get into the my repo directory, change the name of the main branch. And then, um, that's kind of it. It's kind of dope. Like, right? You just made an empty, uh, you just made an empty Git repository on this remote machine under the Dave user. And now in our code directory, I mean, it's an empty repository, but we can already clone that. So we can say, and again, you sub my IP here for yours. Um, we're cloning this empty repository. Git warns us. So there's nothing in it, but it has been initialized. Um, and we can just create a file. So I think that's what we'll do just to kind of test this whole workflow. Uh, we'll say vim readme. What's a repo without a readme? Hey yo. Um, I'm actually using NeoVim and these are my updates that you're now seeing. Let's just say um, welcome. All right, so some subliminal messaging there for you. And uh, now it's the same. I've got some uh, alias is set up for my git, so this is like git status, statsu, same thing. Um, I just have like gs, that kind of thing, set up in aliases. If you want to know about aliases, guess what? No, they are in the book, they are, they're there. Um, so let's commit this. We'll add this, commit with a message saying add it, read me. I'll say add read me. And then we'll push to the origin, sorry, and you'll want to say like git push origin main. And this is gonna push this branch, the main, back up to the origin. Um, and yeah, if you're curious, right, like if you wanna look at Git's config, like this is the difference, right? So this is exactly what you'll see for um, an SSH login, like an SSH based um, origin for GitHub. That's the same thing if you look in there. Um, it's the user you're gonna log in as, um, and then the path. Um, if you're familiar with uh, like rsync, SCP, any kind of these like working with files across remote machines, this, this syntax should be very familiar to you where it's like user at host, colon, and then like a path on the host side. That's something worth uh, memorizing um, or just getting comfortable with. So let's get back on the host. Um, actually, there's really nothing to see on the host. It's a bare repo. Um, let's get into the temp drive and clone again this. So like we're just gonna pretend to be a new like user on a different machine. We're just in a different directory, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna clone into that same repository. I'm just doing this in my temp directory. And we should be able to see the changes that we just made. So like this could be your friend also working on this top secret project uh, on a completely different host, right? As long as they have um, SSH access to that user, you need to add like your friend's SSH key there. Um, but now, if like both of your computers get nuked, um, you know, you do have a central host um, that you're both using to push your changes to. So it's a nice way of backing things up that you don't wanna uh, have on GitHub. Again, this is like a learning project. I'm not saying you should necessarily try to build a competitor to GitHub. like. They, they pretty much put a stop to that by making <laughs> private repos free. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun little project.
So if that was fun, then uh, it's taken directly out of this book. Uh, buy the book. I wrote this book for you. Um, and that's what I've been spending so much time doing. So uh, it's called The Software Developer's Guide to Linux. It's available on Pact, Amazon, everywhere else. Um, Pact has given a code that I'm putting in the description below, which will get you a discount on Amazon. You use it, just like paste that into the Amazon discount like window. And uh, yeah, check it out if you want to support the channel. Like this is the way to do it. So if you enjoyed that, like, subscribe, and again, buy this book. Click the link in the description below. I will be very happy and I will do a tiny little jig every time someone buys this. Uh, appreciate y'all. See y'all in the next one. Peace.